Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. I'm Emily Bowie. I'm a producer and an engineer here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment. Let me know that you stopped by. This is part three of a multi-part series that we've got going on called Pro Tools Basics. And today we're gonna be going over how you set up a Pro Tools recording session. But first, I'd like to invite you to check out my brand new mixing course. This course has over four hours of mixing video content where I go over step by step on how I mix a retro pop rock song. You'll also get my brand new mixing template that's not available alone by itself and all 18 of the multi-tracks. This style of music is becoming super popular these days so it'd be a good opportunity for you to get familiar with it and add it to your portfolio and let your clientele know that you know how to mix this style of music. All right, back to the basics. So some of the first basic steps that you need to take is to make sure that your audio interface is connected to Pro Tools. Now I work in Mac, but if you have a PC, I'm pretty sure that all of this stuff is gonna be very relatable on how you go about setting that up. Because the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is connect your audio interface to your computer, whether that's USB or Thunderbolt. So for Mac users, you'll go into your system preferences and head to your sound tab. Now, something that's a little bit different here for me because I'm using a corrective system of where I can calibrate my speakers to sound the best in my room. And I use Sonarworks for that, so I'm gonna be coming directly out of my Sonarworks system. But if you don't have that, then you'll see your audio interface in your output tab. And mine is the Universal Audio Thunderbolt, because that's my connection. So that's where you'll click for your output. Once that is selected, then you'll head over to your audio MIDI setup. Make sure Pro Tools is all downloaded and connected here. And under Pro Tools, I have my audio interface, the Universal Audio Thunderbolt connection. And you'll also select that as your audio device, whatever your audio interface is. This is going to connect all of your ins and outs with Pro Tools. So once you have all that set up, you go into your Pro Tools sessions. We have a new session here. And in the Setup tab, we will go to our I.O. That is our inputs and outputs. We'll click on that and we'll take a look at the first tab here, which is our inputs. And that is showing all of my inputs that are connected with my audio interface. Now, the one that's in bold here is the one that I actually have active. I have a XLR cable into my line one. And the way that mine's set up here is that I have line one and line two. Now this could be a mic, li mic line or just a line input, my hi Z input. And that's however your audio interface is designed. Take a look at the outputs and those are all of my outputs that my Universal Audio X6 has. Now something that's a little bit different here, you'll have this little icon next to your main outs, your monitor outs, whatever you're going to be hearing your audio back through, that is the channel that has this little monitor. Now you can rename these, as you see right here. Um, I have renamed my uh, main outputs one and two as my monitor left and monitor right. And so that also corresponds over here. Um, that's just how I wanted to have that set up. I have all of these checked so that they, you know, are allowed to have outputs. But on my analog tab here, that is coming out of output one and output two. Those are my, and then by having this symbol there, I know that that is my main output source. Now the way that you select where this main output, this monitor path, is down here at the bottom right my monitor path. This is going to go to my monitor left and my monitor right. I just like to go ahead and, and have them all set up that way because I'm only using the one output source. And if I needed um, to listen on headphones, then headphones uh, one and two are connected to my monitor left and monitor right. So my main outputs, anything that I have, any, any track that I make with the output, monitor left and monitor right, that is the main output that I'm going to be receiving. Okay, and then the next thing over here is your buses. Now I created this Pro Tools session as using my last setup. 
So all of these buses that I used in my last session are going to be shown here. If you didn't want to have that, then we'll just, you would just hit default. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now we go back to just like the default buses that we have. It's going to show all of the hardware and then all of the buses here. So what I want to do is clear these out because I'm not going to use those as any buses. So I'll select those and then click on delete path. So now I've just got a basic setup of all of my buses here. 1 through 24, they're stereo so that I can have that set up as a mono bus or a stereo bus. If you want to have more buses, you can, but this is fine for now. This is fine for tracking uh, 24 buses. So we will go ahead and click OK. So now this is a blank session, but we've got our audio interface hooked up. We've got our computer set up to read Pro Tools. We've got our audio interface to read Pro Tools and vice versa. So now we're ready to start recording. Now, first thing that we'll do is create a new track. And I like to use the short keys for that. And that is Shift Command N. Or you could just go up here to track and hit new. And a lot of these, not all of them of course, but a lot of them will show you what the shortcut is for that. So we'll just set up a mono track for now. And that is an audio track. Now you do have options in all of these. So you have mono and stereo there, audio track, and we can uh, pick any sort of track that we want to do that. But since we're, we are recording, we will hit audio track. And here's where you can change the name of that. So we can say this is going to be our electric guitar. So we'll just title that simply EG. And we can also add more tracks by hitting this if we needed to change uh, the format of that or if we wanted to have it in stereo. Anything that we're going to be changing in these tabs, we will add here. But if we wanted, say, six of everything that was just like this, then we would just hit six tracks and it would make six guitar tracks for us, but we'll just use one for now and hit create. So there's our audio track. Now, this number is not one because I do have those other tracks hidden and inactive here. Otherwise, that would be one since I have the number track tab selected. And we can change the color of this. Uh, kind of like to have my guitars in green. What we need to do is make sure that we click on our input here. This is our I.O. section and our input shows our interface. And that's what we want to select because that's where our mic cables are coming out. So right now it's showing that my monitor is selected because that's in spot one. I like to have my monitor, my main output source as the number one in my order of input outputs. So what I'll need to do is select my mic line one, my mic one, or my line one, my high Z one. So I'll select that. Now my output is through my monitors, which is perfectly fine because I'll probably be having my headphones on and my main output is also going to my headphones. So that's perfect. If you wanted it to go out through something else, um, through a, a different cue system, then that's where you will select that. Next thing that you need to do is hit record enable. You do want this uh, to be in waveform so, so that you can see the, uh, the audio that you are recording. So all of that is set up perfectly. And the next thing that you would do is simply hit the number three on your numeric pad. And whatever instrument you have hooked up, you go ahead, record that, and you'll see it here. You'll know you're recording when the track is turning red here. And you can simply stop that by pressing the space bar. So that would be where your recorded audio would be. Now let's say that you did a couple of bars here and you realize, oh, I hit a wrong note somewhere, kind of in the middle, but I really like everything else that I've done. So what I like to do is make sure that I've got my record enable button in this quick punch mode. And you'll know that by having the P in the middle there of the red record button. So what this allows you to do is say you just wanted to 
listen back to that first part that you liked, punch in, record those couple of notes that you missed, and then come out. So what you do is you'll listen, you'll hit play. And as we're listening to the parts that we liked, we're coming up on that section that we want to fix. We're playing along and then hit three to record that section, hit three again to come right back out of it. So now you've made that correction clip right there. So now we can come in, make our little crossfades because we've got the smart tool engaged here and get rid of any sort of pops that were coming in and out of that recording. Now, if you had an instrument track such as um, software, your drum sample software, keyboards, anything like that, you will set up an instrument track and select whatever it is that you have. Um, let's see, I like to use Easy Drummer. So I've got Easy Drummer set up here. And we can record that, we can drag MIDI here, and then uh, if we wanted to take that MIDI track we could, and put it out into our session, then we can create a MIDI track and put that up there to trigger the instrument track. Um, we can have a, I can probably do um, a little bit more of a specialized video on that. I'm just kind of giving you a broad overview on how you can quickly set up your tracks for a recording session. And using these, of uh, software emulators of instruments is very popular th these days so I wanted to go over on how to create and set that up and so you would just uh, set up something let's see so we could just set this up real quick to show you how that would work You can drag your MIDI here. Now the other thing that you can set up while doing this is any sort of output that you want to route. So you can set up a master fader here that everything is going to go out of. You can go over to your mix window to have that view. And this will be your main output fader. That way you can control your overall output level as well as the individual tracks here. You can also set up effects to be recorded. So this could be a guitar reverb. And I would have my reverb set up here. So we could just go with a stock Pro Tools reverb here. So first we would need to set up a bus. So this will be our bus one and two. We can right click on that and rename it. So we can saw just electric guitar verb. And we can take that guitar signal and send it to our reverb track here. Now we can set up another stereo audio track because our effect is in stereo. And we can call this our electric guitar verb print. So now we're sending our guitar to the reverb and that combined sound is now going to be printed back onto this audio track so that we are printing our guitar effects and you can do this on anything vocals keyboards strings drums anything like that that you want to print your effects to to commit that sound in your recorded tracks okay so i've got a guitar hooked up into my hi z my input one and I've got my mic line one as my input, so we are getting some signal there. 
So let's put everything into action. I want to record my electric guitar on this track. I also wanted to send a copy of that to my reverb, my effects track. And then I want to be able to print that combined sound onto this printed track here. So let's give that a try, see if it works. Okay, so let's see what our combined sound is first. So that's got our recorded guitar plus the effect that we put on it with the D-verb. Here's what the clean version sounds like. So that's just another way that you can add effects to an instrument and print that so that you can have it when you go into your mixing phase. Uh, this way you're also committing to those sounds in production. It's also another way that you can combine the two. You can have your clean, basically DI sound here and Instead of using a, a D-verb, you could have an amp simulator there as well. And that way you've got both sounds to play around with, to see what you like, see what works, what doesn't work, but at least you have both of them there. And once you go into the mixing phase, you can actually just inactivate and hide this reverb track because you've got the printed version in audio form. All right, friends, I think that'll get you going as far as setting up some audio tracks, some instrument tracks, and some effects tracks to start building out your ideas, getting your production together, and getting this into a full-blown recording session. Next time we'll go over prepping your recorded tracks for your mixing session. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did find it helpful, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you'll know when part four comes out. Also, leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you stopped by. All right, thanks for watching, y'all. We'll talk soon.